Okay, let's have a look at the last precipitation titration method, which is the Farjan method. Um, probably a little bit outside of uh, the scope of the New South Wales HSC chemistry syllabus, but nonetheless, it's um, something that you definitely could understand. So let's have a look at it. Farjan's method is probably one of the most unique methods in that it's a little bit more straightforward than the other ones, but it uses some pretty complex chemistry as well. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to draw in um, our conical flask. Of course, we have our burette on top of that one. Um, burette here. Okay, and so what we're going to say is that, okay, look, I have some. And so, of course, as before, we're going to have our chlorines in solution here. And we're going to have our uh, silvers in solution here. Now, what happens is that, you know, as we precipitate, of course, we're going to have um, the precipitation. Now, how I've drawn them before is quite relaxed um, in that they're just kind of randomly arranged, but that's actually not, not the case. When we actually have the precipitation occurring, we know that salts have a very regular arrangement. Um, they arrange themselves into a lattice. So let's draw that here. So let's have a look at this one. So this one in the middle, let's say that that is our sodium. And let's count how many chlorines exist around it. So we have uh, one, two, three, four. So that's to the left and right and in front of it and behind it and also above it. And so below it and above it. So we have six around this sodium. Now, let's check out if that's true for every sodium. So let's ro rotate this around. Let's say that we consider this one here, this sodium. Does he have six people around him? We have one, <coughs> that's not a good color. One, two, three, four only. And so we can see that when you're towards the outskirts, when you're at the most, ex for, for the atoms of the crystal lattice at the very outskirts, they don't have as many uh, friends around them as the inner ones. Of course, this is the only inner one here, but actually if we had a bigger crystal lattice, we'd see that actually um, uh, all of the inner ones would have six around them, but all of the outer ones would have six, would have four less. In fact, if you have a look at, for example, this chlorine, if you have a look at, for example, um, this, 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 this uh, chlorine one, for example, this chlorine one, you'll see that it only has one, two, three sodiums around it. That's even less than four. So we can see that the atoms on the outside of the lattice have less uh, friends than they do inside. Let's go back to our original diagram and see how this might affect things. So this is an, a, a 2D representation of a crystal lattice. Of course, it actually is 3D as we saw before, but that's okay. So what we can see here is that, um, okay, let's say for example, this sodium atom, it has uh, less of its chlorine friends, right? This, this sodium atom has, you know, six, uh, I guess here we can see only see four, but as um, it's surrounded on all sides by chlorines. It's, it feels the negative charge, it feels very happy. This, this sodium atom, it doesn't get have enough negativity, right? It would like one here, it would like one there. It's, it's just not having enough, right? So then what can we do about this? So let's, let's recall that um, um, in our titration, you know, we, we have our silver and our chlorine. So let's replace the sodiums with silver. So let's see what might happen, right? So let's recall that um, when we're titrating um, it, we have our burette. It's not gonna, the burette's not going to be touching it. Uh, the burette has our silver inside, right? And inside we have plenty of chlorine, right? We have plenty of chlorine. Um, 
We have plenty of chlorine. So our chlorine. <coughs> so these these surface um, silvers, you know, they would love to have an extra chlorine here, right? So what might happen is that this chlorine, it would be kind of attracted. It would not bond to it, but it would kind of like hover around it, right? And this chlorine might hover around this, this silver. And this chlorine might hover around that silver. And the same here, right? They, they kind of just hover around. They're not bonded. They're not part of the lattice, but they're just kind of hovering around, right? It's kind of chilling. Now, as you add more and more silver in, what's, what's going to happen? Well, as you add silver in, then, then perhaps these chlorines can actually become part of the lattice, right? Because they, because now it's it's a fully bonded, right? Okay. And then what? So so at equivalence point, there is no extra chlorine solution, right? And what happens after that is if we keep adding in silver, what's going to happen? Well, then my silver is going to do the same thing it you know this this chlorine is like damn i would love to have a and silver here and a silver there right and so what happens is that the silver it'll congregate here and it'll congregate oh it'll congregate it'll do the same thing where it kind of just just uh hovers around right and so you know you're going to have like a lot of you know as you keep adding in silver it's, it's going to keep kind of hovering around whoops it's going to keep kind of hovering around all of your um, chlorines, right? Until what we see is that the whole thing's going to be covered in the silver. And now you can see that the whole surface is covered in in silver. Who cares? Well, the reason why we, why we care is because what actually happens is that we have added an indicator. I didn't tell that that's you earlier, but we've actually added an indicator. This is the indicator. Um, it has a very long name. Um, its name is dichlorofluorescine. So. Um, if you haven't seen this representation before, so, the, so each vertice is actually a carbon. This is a skeletal formula, and there will also be hydrogens coming off it. But we don't draw the hydrogens. Anyway, so so we have this molecule. Now this uh, this molecule is what we call anionic. Right? It's anionic because it's anionic because it tends to have a negative charge, right? Um, so you, you can imagine that um, these hydrogens might fall off. Um, and so the whole thing has a negative charge. Because it has a negative charge, it like it's like, wow, I love all this positivity that's on the surface. It's going to begin hanging out here as well, right? It's, it, it, it in itself, because it's negative, it wants to get attracted to the positiveness here. Now, when we had the chlorine in excess and the chlorine was congregating around the surface this guy's like ew gross i don't like negative things because the whole surface is kind of covered in the negativity he's like no 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 no, no. i'm not a fan of that negativity uh, but now that now that we have the excess silver and the whole thing is covered with a um, positive charge this these guys get in on the action like wow i love how positive it is i love this right um and so they all kind of bind here, right? Now, as they bind to these silver particles, what happens is that it causes a, a conformational transformation in their body. And so what that does is that it causes, it causes them to go from the natural color of green, so these guys are actually normally green, so the whole solution is going to be looking green, it's going to become red or pink. And that's when you say, okay, it's time to stop. And that is um, the Farjan method. So let's run through that again quickly. Um, so let's 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 uh, run through this quickly. Oops. When we have the so we we precipitated some of the silver chloride. When we have the excess chlorine in solution, it'll eventually. It, it doesn't bind to it, but it just kind of hovers around it because it's attracted to this positiveness. 
and of course we still have our indicator in solution it's sitting around here but it's like oh gross it's all negative on the first on the surface i'm negative they're negative opposites us uh, the same things do not attract only opposites attract so it's like this is gross now what happens is that as we have more and more of the silver atoms coming and kind of also congregating around the surface after our equivalence point, then what happens is, is that suddenly these particles are like, wow, I love the positivity, let me bind here. And when you bind there, then again, there's another conformational transformation which causes them to go from their green color <clears throat> to their pink color. And that causes you to say, oh, time to stop. And so it actually works very, very similar to actually the calculations for this is almost exactly the same as for a normal titration of acid base. You just simply have, um, you just add in silver until it changes color and then you end. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. We offer physics, chemistry and math tutoring. For more insightful explanations like this one, head to tutorgum.com.